Live from Washington, D.C., it's the Jim Bohannon Show. And you're invited to join Jim and his guests for the talk of Saturday night. The Jim Bohannon Show is a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Bohannon. Ah, uh, let's not be picky about it, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we don't really have high standards around here, so anybody who's listening, dogs, I don't care, vagrants, we're open. We're open. Okay, great show tonight, and uh, we will get right to our guests. I'll be filling in, by the way, in the Larry King next week, uh, show next week, and a lot of great uh, guests coming up at that time as well. But tonight, uh, this is a double treat for me. Uh, we welcome back a gentleman I had on some time ago who, who did a, a truly great job for us. Cartoonist Mike Peters, and he's got a new book out, another Mother Goose and Grim book called Four Wheel Grimmy, published by the good folks at uh, Pharos. And also tonight, Doug Marlette, my first chance to talk to the kudzu guy. And uh, he's got a new book out called A Double Wide with a View, a tremendous cartoon on the front of uh, the house trailer up on blocks and script. All right, uh, you gentlemen, uh, might as well, I guess, start with uh, you, Doug, since I hadn't talked to you uh, before this uh, opportunity. Uh, how did you start out as a cartoonist? Um, I drew when I was very young, you know, when I was uh, five years old. Uh, I think all of us had the same story, Mike. Probably. We all started drawing before we could write. And, and I copied Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Popeye, and I drew them for my friends at school. And five-year-olds are, are easily impressed. And so my friends at school uh, would give me desserts and, and marbles for my renderings of Popeye. <laughs> and like I saw, you know, this could be lucrative. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it really is like, uh, I mean, it, uh, uh, it really is like when you're when you're in school, it was a way of meeting girls. That was one thing. Right. It was a way of being able to um, kind of express yourself, uh, you know, to your teachers and stuff. Especially when you were supposed to be doing your math homework, maybe. That's right. Oh, God, that's, that's right. for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. I, I'm curious, did, did any teacher ever tell either one of you, Mike slash Doug, you're never going to amount to anything if you don't stop this sure. stupid drawing. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all the time. But you see, though, in cartoons, I, I mean, I don't know of any other profession where you can do something at the age of three and continue doing it, <laughs> and then you life. make a wonderful salary at it. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, and you get awards and stuff like that. <laughs> chewing gum, being a cowboy. But you, uh, cowboys, they don't give awards <laughs> for you got to figure, you know, That's Michael right. DeBakey probably wasn't doing brain surgery on his dog or heart surgery. Right. Three three, four, you know, <laughs> right. You know, I, uh, um, uh, I was asking this guy, Stephen J. Gould, who is a, um, who is a Harvard professor, uh, Harvard professor uh, in paleontology. Mm -hmm. uh, and you go into his office, and, and it's just like that classic... Uh, it's where uh, Indiana Jones would have his right, office. Exactly. All these, all these wonderful things at Harvard with all these bones and stuff. Yeah. And I asked him, uh, I asked him, well, now how did you get into this? And he said, uh, I played with dinosaurs when I was a kid, and then I just kept, kept, kept going, and now I'm, I'm able to do it for real. Being paid for it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's true. I, yeah. I, you know, I guess I, I'm probably making a living today with the same big mouth that used to get me in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, it's really true. You know, I used to doodle in class, and, and I would, you know, the, my very first report card said that although Douglas, um, uh, ex, although he has a tendency to visit with his neighbors in class, he, he excels in art. And that was my first report card. And, and now stupid. what I realize is I'm, I'm still drawing, and, and I'm still putting my nose in other people's business, you know, tell, you know kind of talking, visiting with my neighbors. Well, now, I, I know I've told um, you this story, Doug, but, but uh, and probably I, t I told you, Jim. It's been a together. while. Tell us again. I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, but my old high school, my old high school asked me to come back and um, uh, uh, to uh, 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 to make a speech. I went to an all boys military Catholic, you know, high school. Mm -hmm. It was Our Lady of Armageddon, you know. It was a, <laughs> it, 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 it was a, it was a real unusual kind of thing in St. Louis, and it really was kind of weird. We did well, we had these scapulas, you, you know, Catholics have cas scapulas. Well, wait a minute. I, I'm uh, being your basic Protestant hillbilly. I don't know what a scapula well, well, is. Well, a scapula is like a little picture that you wear around your neck, and it just kind of it's a little picture. Well, like a mugshot? Uh, like a mugshot. Well, it's a little holy. It's blessed. Uh, I mean, a priest blesses it. You know, it's a little well, a picture of what? Uh, it's got a picture uh, at, at my old high school. It had a picture of Jesus on one side, oh. and then George Patton on the other. You know, it was a <laughs> combination of things. Well, and so these people asked me to come back. Uh, I mean, come back to my school. And of course, uh, uh, I mean, at my I thought it was ironic because at my school I was nothing but just a. I mean, they saw no worth at all. I mean, I found a picture just a couple of days ago. God love him of a brother Peter. <laughs> and I don't think brother Peter is a Christian brother anymore. But but uh, but he was assistant principal. He called my mother in 
when I was a senior and said to her, now, Charlotte, you know, uh, God forbid anything bad happens to you, <laughs> somebody's going to have to take care of Mike. You know? <laughs> and, and she said, well, what do you mean? And, she, and he says she said that he is retarded. And my mom got really, really mad. And this is not a joke. I didn't give him any reason to think I wasn't retarded. I was kind of cross-eyed and I had this bad stutter and stuff. Okay, so, but, and I was always just drawing cartoons. So, so my old school asked me to come back uh, to make a speech, and I thought, no, this is really ironic because I was always getting in trouble for this, but now I just kept it up, and now, now they think I'm hot stuff. So I was trying to decide what to do when I went back there, and I thought, you know, the fun thing would be is to do a caricature of some of the teachers who are still there. Uh -huh. so, I, so I went to my mom's house in St. Louis and got out some of my yearbooks and started looking through them and started reading the stuff that kids write, you know. And you, know, and you do devastating caricatures, too. Oh, I know, uh, I know uh, this I'm first hand. I mean, I mean Doug, <laughs> Doug is the king of devastating caricatures. And so, um, uh, and I found this picture of the sky... Uh, this Mr. Morgan, and Mr. Morgan had me for, I mean, I had Mr. Morgan for English, uh, in, in English. A and uh, he put me in the last row of his class, and that was called his vegetable garden. And these were all the kids who were brain dead and hooked up to machines and stuff, you know. Okay, so, so he, he wrote, well, I'm an elaborate, but I'm a cartoonist. Uh, 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 he wrote underneath his picture, and I know I've told you this a thousand times, uh, he said, Dear Mr. Peters, you had better start growing up real soon, because remember, you can't always draw cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Well, that's great stuff. Oh, good. We're going to take a break. We'll yeah. come back, and we'll be continuing our discussion. Doug Marlette and Mike Peters, and those are the guys who bring you, in Doug's case, Kudzu, a tremendous, uh, a lot of good social commentary we'll have to talk about. Exactly. And Mike Peters, of course, is the guy uh, who gives us Mother Goose and Grimm. Two new books out uh, from uh, Kudzu, a double wide with a view, and four-wheel Grimmy, the latest Mother Goose and Grimm book. And we'll take a break, and we'll be back after these messages. Our guests this evening, Doug Marlette and Mike Peters, two of the best cartoonists in the land. You know, during the break, you two were saying no, no, something that... No, let's uh, not was, talk about during No, 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 it was something else oh, that we were okay, talking okay. about during the All break. Right, fine. We, we ought to broadcast the breaks, and we ought to record these breaks so we can sell them the best of Bohannon's breaks. But be that as it may, uh, the break job aside here, I can tell you that they mentioned, two very visual guys mentioned that they like radio. We love Doug, radio. why do you like radio? We love radio, because it's the theater of the imagination. I mean, we love... We love it so much. What were you telling me just before we well, came on? Well, I, uh, I turn off the brightness on my TV just to listen, just to listen to the just the voice part of the TV. Uh, it's kind of radio that doesn't make sense, you know. It is. There are a lot when of visual go, references. When I go to movies, I just close my eyes. I know. I, I know. <laughs> I mean, that's how much we love it. No, we do. <laughs> no, I mean, we do. We do. <laughs> We do. As a matter of fact, my earliest memories were, were of all the old Jack Benny, the old, the, all of those programs that sure. came in. And those, I mean, but I think that, I think that I mean, one real interesting thing about cartoonists, we work all the time. We're always sitting at our drawing board drawing. Yeah. You know, radio is our mainstay. Yeah, that's right. I hadn't thought about that. I guess that's, that's true. Right. And it's oh, yeah. something that you can uh, uh, enjoy without having to take your eyes away exactly. from, the, from your work. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but I would imagine most visual people who who do i mean you know we just listen to radio uh, i mean mainly because well, you can't you uh, you know you, you can't really can't get your eyes off the thing. you know the, uh, certainly it's the all-american way i personally yeah. feel that it ought to be a felony not to <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> right we are uh, you know there's something interesting though despite the fact that you guys are artists uh, you're really much more than that a cartoonist obviously has to deal with words and, and have a sharp wit and I was just noticing something that was on the wire here uh, some uh, weeks ago about a group called Cartoonists for Literacy. Are you familiar with uh, this group? No, I couldn't, didn't read that. I couldn't read it. I couldn't read couldn't, it either. Read it. I, yeah, tried. I tried. I tried. But hard, did you yeah. see the third word? Well, that was really a, a, there's a, a picture. picture. Oh, God. There, 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 there's <laughs> sure, pictures if it was a visual, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. we might look at it, you know. But. Guy, we don't read anything off the internet. Did you hear about this? Thing? <laughs> yes, oh, we did. Oh, sure, we were, heard were, about were it. You, sure. you, yeah, I didn't know if you had taken part in it or not, but uh, but uh, apparently a, a lot of the uh, the cartoonists are working now to try to uh, to fight the battle in literacy. And I recall some time ago when a bunch of cartoonists got together on any, and it was one particular day, and everybody's mm -hmm. strip was about the homeless. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, I think. Uh, I mean, first of all, I think that literacy thing is a very, very natural thing for cartoonists to get involved with, mainly because it's one of the first things that we read as kids that's you right. know and, and for some kids well, I guess account. that's as far as it goes that's right, right. you know cartoons are a funny kind <laughs> I know, I'm of, no, no I, it's true I, and, but cartoons are a funny kind of a uh, halfway between the w words and pictures I mean it's a it's a mix and it's an odd one uh, an interesting mixture of words and pictures that, that I, I'm you there's nothing else like it I mean it's uh, but you know Doug uh, it would be really a shame I was looking through uh, the books here that you guys have out now and uh, Gosh, they would just be kind of kind of weird pictures, 
and you never get the joke. Mm -hmm. You never, it, they're not that visual. You really have to understand the words in those little words. Yeah, that's word right. Balloons. You know, I've always talked about it in terms of that the editorial cartoon, for me anyway, tends to go more towards the one shot picture and, and, mm -hmm. and, and revolves more around the image, whereas the comic strip is more narrative, more words, and, and, uh, and gives you the opportunity to play with that and to tell a story more. You guys ever yeah. tried uh, editorial cartoons? Because I know there have been some cartoonists who have done both. Oh yeah, no, uh, no. We were both originally, of us, both yeah. of us were originally editorial yeah. cartoons, and yeah. are originally, uh, and still draw five, uh, yeah. five editorial cartoons a week. Yeah. You do? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I was not aware. Isn't I don't think I've ever seen an editorial cartoon by either one of you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, we see around uh, this time pretty much our, our uh, uh, herb block. And oh yeah, and sure. Like that. No, no, uh, no. I mean, it's really interesting. I, I think. Uh, uh, um, See, we both of us did editorial cartoons ten years before we ever started the strips. And what's interesting to me, Mike, is how the the uh, the um, audiences for editorial cartoons and and comic strips are so vastly different. For instance, that you would not be be aware of us so much as editorial cartoons, where there are people who only are aware of us as editorial. Well, cartoons. I guess that's true. And yet, I yeah. always read yeah. the editorial cartoons. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I guess I just I just missed yeah. it. Or you know, I may have very well have seen your work and thought, and without even yeah. looking at the little oh, yeah, sure. I may have said, sure. that guy draws sure. just like uh, Mike sure. or Doug." You know. Um, uh, uh, I think I think what Doug said is really kind of fascinating. When both of us started doing the strip, we found that there was a whole different audience completely uh, different and yeah. much broader than editorial cartoon audience i found that there's a certain uh, uh newspaper readers who read editorial pages and are are familiar with editorial cartoons but the comic strip cuts across so much uh of a yeah. broader audience and it was odd for us for for as a matter of fact uh to begin running into people who knew us through the comic strip uh and not from the editorial cartoons because for so long uh, we were identified with it yeah well now I was just wondering, don't you kind of have to, to maybe pull back the sword a little bit when you go from the editorial to the comic page? You know, I, for me, it's uh, it, it seems like such a different medium uh, that the editorial cartoon is for me a kind of a you know that the 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 commentary and the and the bite on things, your take on the world events and the passing show. You know, whereas the comic strip is more dealing with uh basic things and universal things and enduring things that that um that don't change and and are more is more personal and subjective uh yeah. so it seems like totally two different things to me yeah uh, uh i find that the that the editorial cartoons all come from without you know you right. just kind of sit there and you wait for somebody to do something stupid or you wait for a, a quail to say something in this and, town you don't and, have to wait too long yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. No and, and and, and so it's like this big river, and you've always got two or three little um, uh, uh, fishing poles out. And, mm -hmm. and sometime during the day, one will dip down. Oh, okay, this is great. And then you pull it in. But the strip, I think, is all from within. It's a, yeah, it's, you're making it up, and it's based on your observation experience. Right. You know? and, and so you're sitting there with your little pad in an empty room, and you just try to think about yourself. Yeah. You know, and I find that I find that's the fascinating more, thing. More introspective. I hadn't thought of the distinction, but that's very good. Oh yeah. See, um, uh, and, and it really is like a little diary. I think I think well, there's more of us in the strip than there is yeah. on, in the editorial. And, and also, that's one of the reasons the audience is so much broader because you know, uh, editorial cartoons require a kind of a literacy and kind of a, a familiarity with events, current events, and stuff. And you find that that's only part of the of the population, whereas the car comics uh, uh, cuts through all. All kind of stratus. I mean, there are there are lawyers and and uh, intellectuals who read comics, and there are you know uh, the other end of the spectrum uh, that read them. We'll yeah. take a break, and we're going to come back and talk with our gentlemen uh, some more about the wonderful world of cartooning. And uh, I know that you both have given me many many pleasurable hours. <laughs> Just great, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> hours. I'll be honest. I'll admit, in case anybody asks. That, that, that's the first page I turn to. Uh, well, that, to uh, that's you and, uh, and Reagan, you know, <laughs> really. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Reagan I, said that, too. I go to the comic strips first, I go to the sports page second, <laughs> and then, uh, then I, oh, well, time to slog <laughs> through the first <laughs> page. Isn't that so funny? Like, then, cause by that time, I'm up and up, and I can accept the news of the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like my little shot of valley. You, you kind of run interference. Day. Sure. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be back after these messages. All right, we're back again. Yeah, Mike Peters is grabbing a cup of coffee here now, walking around the room, doing play-by-play -play of the guest. This is great. And he cuts to the left, Dad. He's gone! He's going all the way! Yeah. Anyway, so much for that. Hey! Anyway, we were talking a moment ago about the editorial cartoons, and, and you both did that first, right? Is that a common entry level? 
Well, uh, actually, uh, there the aren't. Uh, I mean, it's not really. It's not really common. Uh, I mean, there aren't that many editorial cartoonists slash comic strip cartoonists. There's yeah. only about five, I think. There's McNelly, yeah, Doug, uh, Bill Shore. Oh, wait a minute. Now there's a few more. Uh, Brian. No, maybe they're not. Now there's about ten. Yeah. Brian Bassett or the yeah. It Adam. started happening. Well, see, there there are really two. It, it is two full time jobs. I mean, both. Well, I guess it is. Both yeah. jobs are are full time, yeah. and so it really requires a lot of. Uh, well, you know, some cartoon strips, hope you don't mind me mentioning a colleague of yours, Gary Trudeau oh, yes. of Doonesbury. Sure. Uh, Gary, uh, for example, the Washington Post does not carry his strip on the cartoon page anymore because his uh, social commentary is so biting that they yeah. put it on another page. Well, uh, I mean, do you know when... Um, now, I don't know if the Post had had uh, Doonesbury and then had dropped it or if they never had it. And then, really, they were, they were looking for something new. Mm. And and uh, that's where the Washington Post Writers Group had kind of picked up Bloom County, yeah, which was a real derivative of uh, of Doonesbury. Yeah, and then it you kind guys of all hated off. it when Trudeau came back, didn't you? Now? Oh no, we love. Are you <laughs> kidding? Yeah, we loved him. No, uh, no. I mean, yeah. Trudeau is a Trudeau is a friend, and uh, he's a great he's a great. Talent. No, you guys seem like uh, like friends here. I mean, goodness knows. I mean, no. the, the chatter Listen, you've no. been hearing, folks, is continuing. No, we're don't, not. Don't ever. You know, all those rumors are wrong. We <laughs> only know. we have let been. Me, let me turn you know, we to have Doug's <laughs> book. A double wide with a view. I turn to page forty five here, and it uh -oh. talks about uh, oh. this the cheerleader oh, you character. Got that cartoon in? If a girl wants a career oh. in this day and age, I suppose she needs a real good education. That shows this headline: Famous cheerleader school. These twelve famous cheerleaders want to help you. It's good. Muffy, Buffy, and Debbie Perm, and Mike Peters. Ah, I've got that up on my wall. Another why? guy, another, I mean, that, that's, like, that's like plugging the competition, you know, but, isn't but it? But Mike Peters was a cheerleader. Yeah, I was. In, in it was all, all boys school. You know, they they had to have cheer, cheerleaders. Yeah. They couldn't have girl cheerleaders, so yeah. they picked, you know, okay, so my producer, artists. <laughs> my producer for my America in the Morning program is, is uh, a former cheerleader at the University of Yeah, Wisconsin. but Mike does these little flips into his drawing, to, well, <laughs> into his uh, studio. <laughs> well, Every, I, I don't want to show why? it here. I did. I sprained my arm. No, go ahead, Mike. We've we got, we got, we got about ago. 20 <laughs> seconds to go here, Doug. I want to know, why would you plug the competition? I don't care if you are friends. Because I was thinking of famous cheerleaders, and Mike was one of the most famous. Here, let me just try it right now. <laughs> All right. Nine, eight, that was pretty nine, good. Nine, nine, eight, and a three, four from the Russian judge. Okay. <laughs> I saw him do better than that at Seoul. Uh, but. <laughs> I, well, then, what the heck? We'll take a break. We'll come back and talk more about the cutthroat dog eat or grimmy eat grimmy world right here on the Mutual Broadcasting System. All right, our guests tonight are two of the most famous cartoonists in the world today. Doug Marlette. No, that's true. Doug Marlette, creator of the Kudzu comic strip and the guy who gives us Mother Goose and Grimm, Mike Peters, both with new books out now. A double wide with a view from uh, Doug, and uh, four wheel Grimmy. Great, uh, great shot of the the dog there, uh, peeling paw, I guess, or rubber. I don't know, whatever. Uh, from Mike Peters. I mean, I'm curious about uh, something. With the number of daily newspapers declining, is uh, the strip endangered, or maybe we're going to go more to single panel stuff, like say uh, Gary Larson's Fireside? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I have a person. I have a, a belief about that. What's that, Mike? Don't ever <laughs> say that on national radio again. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> Um, um, uh, because because newspapers are trying to, uh, I mean, the one thing they have learned from USA Today is that USA Today is picking up younger readers. Graphics, you know, graphics. and graphics. You know, no, what? I mean, but they why don't they have any cartoons? cartoons in USA? You know, you well, would think with, with, well, with you would think, yeah. and this doesn't make sense. I mean, the, the one area where where newspapers can compete with television because is the the. The cartoons and the drawings, the visual, the the images that have the same kind of emotional yep. clout and and appeal, uh, that newspapers would be enlarging the cartoons. You would think. You, yep. You'd think they'd have entire sections of cartoons, and, and yet they're shrinking. And and there's always a, you know I think that has something to do with the car with with uh, with humor and and cartoons that there's there's uh, something. It, this, uh, they're always on the back porch, I guess, of newspapers. It's always, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the same reason Woody Allen wants to be Ingmar Bergman. I mean, it's because comedy is, no matter how much it, 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 we enjoy it, it's never taken seriously. And it's not. I wish I had said that. And <laughs> oh, I did. Well, you, you can. can. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's open. We're, we're, we'll let you say it. We'll hold up a cue card, let Mike read that back. What the heck? No, but, uh, no, but see, though. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, um, uh, uh, you know, papers, journalism, our, our American newspapers have been finding out that the age of readers have steadily gone up mm. and we're not getting younger kids. It used to be, back when I was starting out, mm -hmm. 
that kids who didn't read papers, I didn't read a lot of papers when I was a kid, but when I became a yuppie, or uh, you know, in my in my twenties or uh, in, in in late twenties, I would pick up uh, uh, the newspaper circulation. I, I mean, uh, you know, get a paper delivered to mm -hmm. my house, as did everyone around me. Now, the people who are reaching twenty nine, thirty, thirty five are not picking up newspapers. See, That's and it's really scary. That is so. Scary, what yeah. and so and so I was I was talking to Newharth, this uh, mm -hmm. Newharth yeah. from the from uh, USA Today. Al Newharth, yeah, he was and, just on the Larry King show. Yeah, and, and so I was asking him, now what is the age of your readers? He said it's a lot younger than most other newspapers, and it's because of the graphics and the things right. that we're doing, the sound bites. Not You've got to say, be MTV on paper anymore right. to hold I mean, it, I mean, a younger person. Uh, I mean, but not to say this is great journalism, but this is at well, least picking up circulation. But it's not to yeah. say you can't do great journalism and, and appeal visually. And I would wonder why you yeah. couldn't. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think yeah. you can. Everybody really doesn't have to be the New York Times. Right, no. exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, but the reason why the USA Today doesn't have uh, a lot of cartoonists, <clears> and they have little spot cartoonists on, on certain sections, uh, the reason why they don't have comic strips is because it, it, um, they could not pick up like Doug Strip uh, in the USA Today, which is really a newspaper that's in battle with every other newspaper in the country. That's true. There wouldn't be a city in which uh, somebody mm -hmm. else yeah. already had the rights to your right. uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Talk, let's talk about uh, licensing rights for a moment here. For yep. example, I know certainly Mike, you do a lot of this uh, with grimy stuffed uh, animals yep. and yep. greeting cards and stuff. Uh, is it a big deal? I mean, a lot of athletes make more money from endorsements, for example, the side things, than they do in, in actual pay. And I right. wonder how big this industry is now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the strip, well, the strip, well, go ahead, Mike. But the strip be be becomes the advertisement for the license. Right, exactly. See, see. Uh, well, uh, but, but in, my, you know, in my situation, um, uh, I started doing the strip, and I was in about 58 newspapers or something like that, uh, or... Uh, 65 or 80 something like that mm -hmm. and I was in that in that number for about a year and a half and nothing was happening I mean uh, I had picked up that number of newspapers and, and, then, fast, and, right? and then and then just holding yeah. fast and uh, uh, this t-shirt company came to me and said well, you know I mean we'd like to put some of your cartoons on a t-shirt I didn't think that was a good idea because I didn't know anything about these guys uh, they were from Texas and so then uh, then my syndicate would not let me put in a couple of cartoons uh, into my strip mm. uh, that I wanted to that I thought were really kind of fun uh, uh, both you know one was something about safe sex with the dog and, and doing something <laughs> and and then there was this other cartoon about uh, 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 that I had with with my dog Grim wearing a uh, a little slicker and little boots and he's kind of walking along the rain uh -huh. you know and he says remember the Surgeon General says always wear your rubbers well well <laughs> well uh, I mean my syndicate would not let me put that in and so when the second one happened I called up to the t-shirt company I said you know I'll do it if you can let me uh, put in anything I want and they said fine so I put in these two cartoons then I and they started selling but more than that I found out that the towns that they were selling in the newspapers eventually picked up my strip Ah. And so, and so, it's really character recognition that a lot of the uh, you know merchandising stuff is. It's a it's an area that you can put really heavy, a little bit heavier messages that you can't put in the newspaper. Yeah. You, you can put them on cups and T-shirts, and it's terrific um, identification so that maybe new, more newspapers will pick up your stuff. I'm curious about something that Mike said, Doug, uh, about the, the syndicate would not let him run that particular cartoon. How much control do you guys have? I mean, have you ever had stuff in Kudzu rejected by your syndicate? I think early on, uh, uh, but um, I'm not with the syndicate anymore. Uh, <laughs> no, so, uh, let's not get <laughs> ugly, Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, early on there, were, there was more. The, you know, I think there's... Uh, there's some degree of, of editing, but, but it's fairly, uh, um, in my case, it's, I don't get a lot of that. It's pretty much me doing it. Yeah, yep. you, you do a lot of really social commentary. Look at some of the characters here that are on the back of uh, double, view, uh, double Wide with a View here. I mean, uh, will be done. Uh, your televangelist, uh, you've had a field day with him. Of course, in the news has just been shoveling material your yeah, way. That's right. Uh, nobody's ever ever questioned any of those. Are you oh, sure. I mean, people do, but but that's also part of what is the fun. The fun of, of cartoons is you can go into those areas uh, that that are uh, that everyone kind of feels like you're not supposed to. I mean, that's that's what 
uh, we kind of repress and hold back. And, and cartoons are, are able to explore those and kind of de diffuse and, and demystify those things. And so I'm, I'm always attracted to those areas that are that make you kind of nervous. You I'm, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> when you were in school, did, did you know uh, Veranda and Nasal T. Lard oh, Bottom? Sure. And he, these are real. Sure. These are, are sure. In other words, if you went to a class reunion, there are lots you could you could you could say, well, he is uh, Maurice and uh, he is Kudzu. And, well, everybody, you know, but they're all kind of you know they're all different people and they're Do all. Do you parts go to class reunions? Sure, sure. <laughs> sure. People say, that was me, wasn't it? And I, you know, and I know grown-ups who think <laughs> uh, think that they are those characters. But I think uh, you know what you try to do in a strip is hit on basic things that that uh, apply to a lot of folks and I think we all have kind of a nasal part of ourselves and, and a, a veranda self-absorbed uh, See, uh, that's how uh, uh, I mean that's the only way that you know that you're doing probably the right thing mm. in our business in, I'm sure in your business I, I mean this is a very solitary kind of business that you're mm. in you know being in a radio thing you got to you know, a producer, but that's but you don't hear the people out there, and and, and of course you do because you we, we have the a lot interaction of in. with the telephone. But yeah. cartoonists sure don't. I mean, we're in our little thing. We, we have no idea if what we're doing is really funny. Uh, you know, it strikes us as funny, but we don't know if it's really going to hit them. Mm -hmm. The only gauge that we have is that we're a person. I mean, we're mm -hmm. a person. If we chuckle at it, if we go good. This is, <laughs> then obviously maybe somebody out there is going to chuckle at it too. And if we don't think it's funny, we can't assume that anyone else is going to think it funny. See, if you say, well, now this is really a funny cartoon, but you don't laugh at it yourself, uh -huh. you know, probably no one else is going to laugh at it. And I, I would say about 90% of strips yeah. out there are like that. I, I mean, yeah. you know a lot but of these cartoonists laughing, yeah. aren't laughing at their own stuff. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, not everybody can have the razor-sharp wit, let's say, of... Uh, of uh, Nancy or our little Henry. Oh, now, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to bait us and get us into cartoonist <laughs> bashing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that, Garfield? <laughs> okay, we'll take a break. What, what I mentioned, that this is, snoopy. of course, an interactive program, and of course it is, and that means we'll be taking your phone calls in less than half an hour. This would be a good time to dial in. 703-685-2177. If you'd like to talk to two of your favorite cartoonists, Mike Peters of Mother Goose and Grimm, and Doug Marlette of Kudzu. And we'll be back after these messages. Ah, this has been a fun night. Yes, uh, the chair recognizes the uh, gentleman yeah. from uh, the Mother Goose elder, and Grimm. Elder cartoonist from Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, talking about censored, you know, c censoring yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 the syndicates, God love them, you know, are not censoring our strips all that much. But I still have editors, you know, I still have my editors um, uh, when I send in my editorial cartoons. Yeah. And I, 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 I and and I did a I did a cartoon I was really kind of proud of, and I wanted everybody to see this, but nobody saw it. I don't, I don't know if I told you about mm. this, Douglas. It, it was right during uh, the hostage, all the uh, the hostage stuff, and you remember. Yeah. You know, Khomeini and Iran and all that kind of right. stuff. And Bush was, oh, uh, Bush didn't know exactly what to do. And, and so I had Bush standing there, and he's got a, 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 a you know, he's wearing his T-shirt. Mm -hmm. And on the T-shirt, it says, Shiite happens. <laughs> well, I thought it was brilliant, but I swear, I mean, you know, I, I called up the syndicate and they said, sure, send it out, but no editor would run it. No. I, you know, I never, I never Except it was on every bulletin board <laughs> after one of those papers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, aren't there sort, sort of underground uh, comic books and the like now that sometimes are sold in museums yeah, and then gallery these, bookstores? In fact, in fact now ours are underground. <laughs> like, like moss and raw, and there's some, some similar things like that. Oh yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. See, uh, see, but that's what, but those are. Uh, I mean, those things are things that we love. I mean, we uh, we grew up on a lot of the, uh, not not Sam Gross, but who's I mean, who's the guy who did the real, um, you know, keep on trucking cartoon? Oh yeah, you know? Art Crumb. Yeah. Art Art uh, Crumb. Oh, what's the difference? God. Are those people who would like to be at your level, or or? No, 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 no they're no, doing no, their no. own. They're their own. You know, they're doing their own thing, and they're wonderful and yeah. fabulous and. and and see what they're doing. I mean, they're um, they're really tapping specifically themselves, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean they're really into the hardcore of themselves, and they have a hardcore readership. That may not be massive. It may not be you know in the billions. Yeah, for they, one thing, you know, they they don't. It's not for family newspapers. I mean, they're dealing with all kinds of. Uh, uh, Touchy, yes. yeah, and, uh, you know, and sexual yeah. things. Some are, some are, some are, in fact, are known as uh, as visual uh, novels. You're right. Yeah. Right. right. I, I've got, I've got to ask you this because uh, th there was, I forget what it was now. It was, uh, it was, it was an X-rated cartoon. Is what yeah. it was. It Our was a motion picture. It was Crumbs, Fritz the Cat. Right? Yeah. Oh, right, right, Fritz, Fritz the Cat. Exactly. Fritz, yeah. Have you guys ever, in your uh, wildest daydreaming moments, have you ever drawn just a filthy kudzu or a filthy mother goose and grim, and then said, "Well, that's cute," and, and I, obviously you, know, you didn't. 
give it to anyone. You know, I you know I draw kudzu and. And I would never do that, but I have drawn a filthy mother group. Right, I've done lots of. <laughs> You've done it. Oh gosh! Yeah, sure. I've had, yeah, I've had, I've had I've kudzu had, doing all these things. You guys in the have bathroom, your own styles. You know? I'm curious if if Mike tomorrow went on vacation, could you, Doug? Could you copy his style and vice versa? Could I mean, could you fill in to the extent that we wouldn't notice? Um, I don't know. You know, Mike's very. very... You should tell him. You should tell him what. Uh, I mean, when Doug was first starting out, I mean, oh, you have about uh, about two minutes. Do we have two minutes? See, okay. I, when we were starting out, I, I was struggling like we all do with our styles. And, all, and and Mike and I had known each other for a while. I said, Mike, yeah, I, you know, and we're always angst, you know, all this angst and, and, and agony, right. agonizing over our stuff. And, and, I, and, and I said, Mike, you know, I, I just don't know what I'm doing. And, yeah, <laughs> and he said, well, why don't you, he said, why don't you send me some of your stuff and, and I'll take a look at it. And, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. I said, would you? That'd be yeah. great. So sure. I said, a bunch of my cartoons. Yeah. yeah now, and, and you got to understand. Now, I was sending, I was sending my editorial cartoons to Doug's newspaper. He was syndicated, see, so the know, editorial cartoons came to my paper. Okay. So. okay. And so Doug, and so Doug sent me all of his cartoons, and I and I kind of waited for about a, a about two days, and then I called up Doug and I said, Doug, Doug. No, Doug. you sent me a letter, Mike, and the letter. Oh, said, that's right. The letter that's said, right. "Dear Doug, I don't know. I looked at this, and <laughs> you know, and I was about twenty-two at the time. He said. He said, "It just if you, you could just you, keep the same fresh, fresh, fresh style you, you that you had. You seem to have lost it, and if you could just recapture that vitality you had huh. in your early work." Yeah. <laughs> and, and now you wanted me to, uh, um, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and you asked me to tell you the truth, and, and this is the and truth. And I know this hurts, yeah. but I, know this I have hurts. to be honest. We're friends. Okay. And then the next day, I waited <laughs> one day after that note, and then and then his paper, the editorial page editor, uh, uh, received in my package the of Mike editorial, Peter's cartoons. you know, the Mike Peters cartoons. Yeah. And they were all his cartoons, but with my signature on them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just scratched out my name. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike Peters, Dayton Daily News. <laughs> Put in my name. Well, you're, you're, you're terrible. Yeah. You're great. You're terrible. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, we're well, going to take a break. We're going to come back and talk some more. Uh, we'll, we'll ask you a little bit of maybe about how aspiring cartoonists great. might get a start in the business as great. well. Great. And, of course, we'll be taking your calls in about another 10 minutes or so. 15 minutes at 703 685 We'll be back after these messages. Our guests this evening are Mike Peters of Mother Goose and Grim fame. His new book is called Four Wheel Grimmy. And also tonight we have Doug Marlette. He's got a great new book out also of the Kudzu Chronicles called A Double Wide with a View. We, we talked in the beginning about how you guys started out, basically you became cartoonists by drawing. Uh, for those out there, I'm sure, who uh, have an interest in this sort of thing, maybe they, they can draw a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they answer the ads in the paper, you know, can you draw this duck? Well, then you could be a famous artist. Mm -hmm. uh, which, by the way, I'll ask you if those are legitimate, but uh, how do you get into sure, it? Sure, those are, but you know, one of the things that you, that it, I have finally figured out after years and years of doing this, is that cartooning is really not just drawing. It's, it is drawing, and, there, and drawing is part of it, but, and it's not just writing, it's not just, the, it's a com it's weird combination of things that that is more greater than the sum of the parts I mean I, it took me a long time to figure out that people who drew well c were not necessarily good cartoonists you know and people who uh, who wrote well couldn't you know couldn't necessarily tell do humor and and it's just there has to be a meshing of of all of those elements. Mm -hmm. you know? you know, when we see, for example, comic strips, uh, strips Mike, they're done by two people. Uh, is one of them usually drawing and the other writing the lines? Yes, yes. Um, I've always thought that I could write the lines from. I can't draw yeah. with a. And, and, and yet though, and yet though, I don't. You know, there are some co there are some uh, like combinations, uh, some pairs, like uh, uh, God love them. Uh, Dick Brown, who uh, invented and drew uh, Hager the Horrible, mm -hmm. wonderful strip who just recently passed away. But Mort Walker, who does Beetle Bailey, asked and Dick Brown to help him on a new strip, uh, I mean, uh, back then, uh, called High and Lois. Yeah. So uh, so uh, Dick started drawing the cartoon High and Lois, and Mort started writing it. But now it gets real weird, because you're never quite sure what the Dick Brown group is drawing and what the Mort Walker yeah. group is I mean, is drawing because uh, because they because they are both very funny and they both are great artists. They, yeah. You know, yeah. it goes back. See, and these forth. things become among a lot of times with cartoonists they become industries. I mean, where cartoonists uh, have uh, entire studios of lots of you know cartoon laborers. You know, well, who are I doing. Mean, I, mean, who are doing the, I mean, that was the you know the view of comic strip guys that we got as kids, both yeah. Doug and I. God, we would go to movies and we'd see. 
<laughs> uh, Al Cap, you know, in a movie with Bob Hope. And I remember I saw him, he was up in his <laughs> penthouse. And we always talk about this, you know. I mean, this is what a real cartoonist does. He walks around in his, in his night coat, you know, in, in his robe. <laughs> his ascot. And, his ascot. <laughs> yes. and, he, and he says, and he's always talking on the phone with Bob Hope. He's like, oh, Bob, how are you? you know? And you're saying, now, see, now, there's a And he's got a staff of six kind of drawing the <laughs> character, you know. You know and, and, and so there we are in our underwear, you know, yeah. and, and not shaving after three days. So I, I, I got to get this sun. Day done, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some, sometimes uh, cartoon art now is considered great works of art. You can see them in, in galleries mm -hmm. and uh, and the like. Uh, mm -hmm. People collect them. Have you ever had people call up and ask for particular uh, oh, sure, originals? Sure, sure. Yeah. sure. And, and, and 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 see, um, uh, it used. I mean, it used to be that cartoons were never considered art, are, are, mm -hmm. and were not really even collectibles, except. For the people that you drew them mm. on, you know. I think it was when you know there was a moment when it became ours when Picasso asked you for an original. Well, I right? know, I know. I said, I said, no, Pablo. I just, I just can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's no. when it was, it was considered art. <laughs> no, but now, <laughs> do it. Yeah, do it. I mean, but now because of of places like this uh, Milton Kniff uh, Library up yeah. in uh, up in up Ohio in Columbus, State, yeah. uh, but Ohio State, uh, and a number of art. Art galleries. Uh, a couple well, you, I, could, I could buy uh, your stuff. Yeah, in art yeah. Gallery. You know, Very, Americans. Fact, I've got, I've got some in my trunk. If you want me to bring <laughs> some, sure. Up, I'm, I'm easy. Uh, sure. <laughs> this is Mike there with an overcoat. Hey, you don't think I do it? You know, sticking out ahead of an alleyway. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, it's interesting that in, in indigenous American art is always taken seriously overseas much more quickly than it is here, and and I think America is just beginning to catch up with European countries and and the Japanese and appreciating American art because. Uh, because um, uh, well, cartooning because it's like it's like bluegrass music or, or country music or rock and roll. It's always goes over very big elsewhere in the world, uh, mm -hmm. and it's still kind of looked uh, patronized in this country. But but cartoons are now starting to uh, they're right. starting to you know, be hung in museums and and all of that. Yes. Uh, but the Europeans have been way ahead on this. I mean, they they, they worship cartoonists in in Italy and mm -hmm. in France. Yeah. Uh, could could. Uh, uh, Pablo Picasso, Poopsie Picasso is a French yeah, song. Yeah, crazy, <laughs> uh, crazy Poopsie, what a guy. But uh, could, could he have been a great gra cartoonist? Oh, he yeah, was I, a great. He was cartoonist. a great cartoonist. Oh, he was. I, oh, I, uh, no, I mean, I mean, just. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, what is a cartoon? It's an exaggeration of reality, and what yeah. he did was an exaggeration. Yeah. Yeah. He could make Mona Lisa look like an amoeba. It's you know? his way of sure. seeing. You know what? I mean, what all cartoons, uh, what all art is, is a way of seeing. And you know, the thing, Mike, I think that that what you try to do and what what all artists do is is they do what great athletes do is the or you try to get the, the your competitors or the the world to play your game you get mm -hmm. you get everyone to see things through your eyes and that's mm -hmm. Picasso did that and what any any great cartoonist or artist does is that they like Cezanne drew trees for the first time the way no one had ever drawn trees or Van Gogh saw saw things in his way and then the world sees it in mm -hmm. his way and that's what it, when the cartoonists are hitting on those basic things and doing doing their job then then they get the world to see through their eyes mm -hmm. and right. then everyone's nodding and saying yeah, yeah. isn't that <laughs> fascinating yeah. but that is true uh, i mean just on the comic page uh, there are certain rhythms that like people who read kudzu um, they go through a certain you know, when they see the character, when they see yeah. and they've read Kudzu, then they're into a certain rhythm. Mode. They're in yeah, your, they're in your mode. They're in, in your mode. They're in your game. And then they know, switch over uh, over to the far side, mode. Yeah. and that's someone else's mode. And they yeah. switch over to you know. Right. All right. We're going to take a break. Come back with your phone calls. Seven zero three six eight five two one seven seven. Our guest tonight, Doug Marlette and Mike Peters, uh, two of the greatest cartoonists of our time. And uh, don't forget that you can obtain audio cassette tapes of the guest portion of the Jim Bohannon Show and Larry King Show by writing to Lion Recording, L-I-O-N, Post Office Box 962, Washington, D.C., 20044. Costs $4.95, and you can pay with MasterCard, Visa, hot checks, you know, whatever. We'll take a break and be back here on the Mutual Broadcasting System. Yeah, I'm the talk of Saturday night in front of the, the two drawers. Say, you know what these guys have been doing during the news on the hour? They've been drawing. They're yeah, see, guys. They're both drawing. Yeah, you see, They're Jim, wonderful. you know, we both, both Doug and I are the only kids when we were going to school who actually signed the things that uh, uh, the drawings that we did in the men's room? You know, I mean, we would do our little things and then we'd sign our names. Put your names you know, so the principal Doug would be sure to know where to send the check. That's true. All right, our guests are indeed Mike Peters of Mother Goose and Grim fame, his new book Four Wheel Grimmy, and Doug Marlette, who gives us Kudzu, his new book A Double Wide with a View. Our number is seven zero three six eight five two one seven seven. We're taking calls right now, and this one's from Tacoma Park, Maryland. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Uh, great show, Jimbo. Thank you. 
two questions. One, uh, what newspapers do these gentlemen draw editorial cartoons for, and who are some of their favorite editorial cartoonists? Oh, two very good questions. Oh, All right. Uh, you guys uh, um, draw for... Uh, I draw for New York Newsday, uh, and Mike draws for the Dayton Daily News. That's yeah. our home-based newspaper. Of course, yeah. we have editorial cartoons are around yeah. the country. And do you have uh, a favorite editorial cartoonist? Well, Mike is my favorite. Doug, Doug for sure, uh, uh, has me <laughs> as his favorite. It. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> her block you like her block oh, absolutely. oh yeah no i mean there are some i mean there, I mean, there are great ones um uh, uh herb of course uh, here in washington yeah, you know, Paul um, Conrad, you know Paul Conrad, Jeff McNelly, Don Wright, yeah, Tony Pat Oliphant, Tony Oliphant. Yeah. Uh, I mean Tony Oliphant, <laughs> Tony Oliphant, Tony Oliphant. Uh, Pat oh, Oliphant. Tony just called in. Dumbo, <laughs> Dumbo <laughs> the Oliphant. Whatever. Okay. The next call is from Dayton, Ohio. You're on the uh -oh. air. Hello. Oh my goodness. Hi. Hi. I was just. I, I just wanted to tell you that I think you two are having entirely too much fun. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Did you recognize this voice, uh, Mike? When? When? Uh, who is this? Um. Well. I live in a small apartment in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Mike. Oh, that's my daughter. That's, that's Marcy Michelle Peters. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, and I wanted to wish you two happy sweetest day. Oh, aren't you, uh. dear? Well, you know, we were, uh, Marcy, we were just joking about, uh, you know, if our kids are going to call, you know, because we were hoping that people were going to, you know, light up the things, and all of a sudden, here, here you are. <laughs> Let me ask Hi, you. Marcy. Marcy, what's it like having a cartoonist for a father? Now, this is a guy who does not get up every morning and go to work. He gets up every morning and he goes from, like, the bedroom into his, uh, his <laughs> den or whatever. Uh, what he goes to is into his Superman outfit and <laughs> me at school is what he goes to. <laughs> hey, I tell them that, uh, I mean, tell them what I did to you. Oh, okay. Well, which time? Well, okay. <laughs> what's this? Is, is, it, is it strange having your father around all day like he's unemployed or something? No, 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 because he's, he's always busy. He's always busy. But, um, yeah, he, he's, he's pretty fun to have around, though. <laughs> well, um, you know, she'll say that on network, but, boy, she sure doesn't tell me in person, you know. <laughs> no, uh, no uh, 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 the one time I was, uh, you know, I was at home, and Marcy called up hysterically, and she said, oh, for God's sake, you know, I left my term paper at, at home and bring it down to the school. This is when she was in high school. Okay. You know, I'll bring it down to the school as soon as possible. So I said, I said, okay. And so I put on my Superman outfit, and I went. You really have a Superman yeah. outfit? Oh God, oh, sure. Right. I got a second one. The first one wore out. Too. Yeah, I got a telephone booth. <laughs> and, and, and so I went down to the school, and then I knocked on her door, and uh, and she was in class. And the teacher opened up the door. And I said, "Hello, Mr. Hershey. Do you have a little girl here named Marcy?" And she and she said a blasphemous word. I mean, you know. And and, and I went and I said. Well, she asked me to come down here as fast as I could. <laughs> you know? Well, she didn't talk to me for about two weeks after that. I could, I could understand. I love you, sweetheart. I spent the rest of my school years underneath my desk. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can understand why. <laughs> I Martin, love you. Thank you for calling. That was a delight. <laughs> That's uh, Mike Peters' daughter right there. We have another call now at uh, 703-685-2177 from Montreal. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes, go right ahead. Good morning to both of you. Hello. Hello. Um... Gee, I'm so happy about this guest on uh, Mr. Bahan. Well, I'm glad. Um, I've got a son, and my husband and I are faced with a sort of dilemma, I guess. He's a, well, I guess what you would call a freshman in uh, university. Is that first year? You know? That's first year, yeah. All right, in the first year of university, because go go, we, we have a different school system up here. And um, <clears throat> he has been drawing cartoons since he was six years old. Mm. Is he good? Let's be honest uh, now. He's not good. He's the na Well, I'm not speaking as a mother. I'm speaking from other people. Okay. Because from his university and his teachers, he's in fine arts. Uh-huh. Um, he, he's great. <laughs> okay. Uh, does he want to make a living at this? But there's a big problem we're having with him now. Yeah. Um, he decided to do uh, comic strips. Right. Um, they're on a repeat series type thing on... Um, teenagers, young adults, on drugs, uh -huh. and not to do them. And um, one of, well, we have major, large firms here who are, um, you know, um, very interested in recruiting him right. now. Okay. So, so far, I haven't, yeah. I haven't heard a problem yet. Well, yeah. What's the problem? The problem is, is that we want him to, f him to finish his education. Oh, I see. They're well, uh, big, big, big bucks here. Okay, yeah. now, uh, okay, now, can I ask you now, um, uh, now, do, do you think that the comic strip is pretty good? Um, well, they think it's 
But you see, it's not for me to judge. I'm a sure. mother. Sure. No. Yeah, but but you say that you said earlier that other people really think that your son, honest yeah. to goodness, he's is really, great. He's really good. Well, if he's really good, then no, uh, then don't, don't God, him, don't, don't, don't him have him get business. into the business. No, <laughs> they keep him out. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> have him stay in school for, for, for God's about, sake. About 30, until we're dead and gone. Yeah, dead <laughs> and gone. Maybe 30 years. Keep him in school. <laughs> No, no. We're you joking. Know, yeah, I mean, we are joking. But, you know, but, but he really should. Uh, um, uh, I find that college is, is just uh, uh, gives you m more of a depth to be able to do a comic strip and to be able to do cartoons than if you don't have college. Yeah. Because, you, because no other time in your life are you structured to read the great classics and to find out about history and, and, and yeah. you know, and to write. And, and college affords you that for yeah. four years. And he's going to be good three years. Uh, yeah, from exactly. Too. And to be a cartoonist, you need to not only have the ability uh, to communicate, but you need to have something to communicate. And Wouldn't it give you that discipline that you need in life as well? What gives you? Uh, yeah, you mean the college? The college yeah. experience. Sure. I'm sure that it would. In general, I mean that you yeah. must have. Absolutely. I mean, it's not just talent. You got to yeah. have discipline. Yeah, yeah. That, that that would probably be a wise advice to just you know maybe your son could do but some do stuff in the part time. In I mean, the guy's hearing these big dollars and he's he's going to be 18. I would, you know, I would send him to Mike's house and let Mike deal with it. I mean, he's got three daughters. He's, <laughs> yeah, tell, he's, him, <laughs> tell him he's still going to be good. Yeah, that's true. Right? Those are eligible daughters. Tell, tell your son, ma'am, that, that seriously, that he's still going to be good in three years and yeah. probably better because of his I, college Both of us would, would say he yeah. should be in college. Yeah. yeah. Be going to school. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a break. We'll we come back. We did. We'll yeah. Hey, right. <laughs> take a break. We'll come back with more from our guest tonight, Mike Peters and Doug Marlette, the cartoonists who give you Mother Goose and Grimm and Kudzu, respectively, and even respectfully. And we'll be back after these messages. We're talking tonight with cartoonists Doug Marlette and Mike Peters, who give us Kudzu and Mother Goose and Grimm. And we have a call now from Athens, Georgia. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi there. Hi. Uh, Mike and Doug, let me tell you first, uh, I really enjoy your work. Oh, uh, Doug, I remember your work with the Charlotte Observer and your uh, squeaky from NRA poster girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, that was oh, classic. Uh, however, I would like to make, I guess, a respectful <laughs> criticism yes. with respect to editorialists who become cartoonists. Mm -hmm. right. And please remember this is just one man's opinion. Sure. Okay. It seems to me that I'm seeing a kind of a lack of uh, variety and perhaps even creativity in editorial cartoonists who go to cartoon strips. Mm -hmm. A quick example. During the summer, Jeff McNeely, you know that Schuyler is going to boot camp. Mm -hmm. uh, Scrawls, when he does Pop's Place, he's going to have at least once a month a cartoon about Pop's Chili. Uh -huh. And Doug, though I love you like a brother, I've got to jump on you too. Uh, on the Sunday paper, I know it's usually going to be three things. We'll be done praying, uh, we'll be done officiating a marriage, or Doris uh, making a comment about chocolate or masterpiece theater. I guess my question is this: Is perhaps are you take, biting off more than you can chew when you take on two jobs? Well, all right, interesting uh, call. What do you guys think? Well, I think I think first of all, you know, I mean, one of the <coughs> nice things about doing a strip is that. Uh, uh, I mean, from the mail that we get, at least from what I get, and I know Doug gets it, is people love the going. Uh, I mean, going back to certain things that they yeah. identify with. I mean, that's why that's why the Charlie Brown and 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 little Lucy holding the. Uh, I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, holding the football is such a classic situation. People love it when you do that. I mean, w believe me, we have more than enough ideas. We could be doing a ton of different things. Yeah, it's really a matter of selection. I mean, I, sure. yeah, I, um, with all of those things, I think it's you return to certain themes because it's, uh, uh, you know, they, just the way you return to certain themes in music in a, in a uh, symphony or, I mean, the, that repetition of themes is part of what makes it, you know, some people find, uh, those, find those things boring. It's all personal. One of the things you find out about cartoons is that, you know, uh, the things that you may find um, boring or uninteresting, other people find endlessly fascinating. Yeah. And so, you know, it's all personal, and that's the great yeah. thing about cartoons. Yeah. yeah. We'll take a, uh, no, we won't take a break. We'll take a call. Forgive me. But there's the Maryland. You're on the air. Hello. Uh, did, didn't the New York Times, I mean, excuse me, the New York Daily News, Chicago Tribune, have a lock on, uh, that syndicate have a lock on uh, the uh, cartoons very kind in the uh, four, 50 years ago, and how did that uh, change. I know that you got King and you have others doing it now. I was uh, raised on the, uh, brought up in the Washington Post on uh, 
Dick Tracy mm-hmm. and Little Arthur and Annie. And when they went out, I sort of lost uh, interest in that. Okay, well, let's let, the, let the, our, our guests uh, address that uh, subject. Who really owns, shall we say, the syndicate business, or does anybody? They're anymore? all individually. Yeah. I mean, that, that all broke up to some degree, although... Well, I mean, it's one of the reasons why, uh, do you remember, um, it, it was Milton Kniff who started Terry and the Pirates. Yeah, and I forget what newspaper. And if somebody out there might might I mean, might be able to help me out, but it was like the New York, not Daily News, but it was uh, you know I don't know the I mean I know it wasn't the Times. Mm-hmm. Um, they owned they owned this strip, uh, 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 you know Terry and the Pirates, and so Milton Kniff just decided, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop I'm gonna stop doing this strip, and then I'm gonna start doing uh, Steve Canyon. So he did that. Uh, r- r- you know, a real funny little story. Um, uh, then a guy named George Wonder started doing Terry and the Pirates, okay? Uh, had taken over, um, uh, uh, you know, Kniff's style. Right. Yeah. And, and at, this one, uh, at this one cartoonist function, uh, the famous cartoonist uh, Rube Goldberg was up there introducing famous cartoonists in the audience, you know? Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, George Wonder. Uh, uh, the creator of uh, oh. uh, yeah, the creator of of Terry and the Pirates, a- and everybody was oh really embarrassed and oh god we thought oh that and, and then he said and now I'd like to introduce uh, Milton Kniff, the creator of George Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back with more of your calls for our guests Doug Marlette and Mike Peters, cartoonists extraordinaire and nice guys too. I'll tell you. This has been a good, fun show. We'll be back with more of your calls after these messages. All right, back to your phone calls for our guests tonight, Doug Marlett and Mike Peters, cartoonists who give us Kudzu and Mother Goose and Grimm, and they've got a couple of new books out now. We take a call from Auburn Hills, Michigan. Hello. Hello, sir. I have a question. I, well, me and a friend of mine are getting a comic strip together. We already have written about nine episodes. I do the writing, and she does the drawing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... We already have like plotted out what, what we want the characters to be like and more or less the direction we want it uh-huh. trip to go in. Right. What do I have to do to if I'm if I can call up an editor say make a presentation? What should I have giant pictures of it, um, or do they want do they want certain size? Do they want it in color? Are there certain things I would do? Sure. Okay. Yeah. You're making your first approach to an editor. How do you present well, that script? Well, for one thing, you don't necessarily have to make a presentation. All you have to do is just make copies of the drawings and send them off to an editor or to a syndicate. And you need to make about six weeks. Uh, they need to be able to see that you can do this and sustain it forever. You know. But and you're saying that they should send in six, six weeks. Six worth weeks of worth, or, t- or twelve weeks. You know. And 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 what I would suggest is just do much more than that, and then call down to the very best stuff that you show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and see, I guess you can't really. There are odds of getting taken on, let's say, with uh, with uh, King or, or the, one of the other syndicates. That's pretty slim, right? Well, you got to start with you small things. Right? not well. It's it's no. You don't have to start uh, that way. I mean, if something is good and if it's ready to go, it yeah. can go. Uh, they get hundreds and hundreds of uh, submissions for mm-hmm. comic strips. But if it's good, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color you are or what uh, sex you are or whether you, you know, are left-handed or right-handed. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you, know, you get, I know yeah. there aren't very many women. Like was it Kathy Guyswide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, Kathy and, and Lynn Johnson. Yeah. There are more and more, and, and yeah. very fine. And very Why not yeah. more women? I wonder until now. <laughs> well, I think um, the same uh, thing with uh, comics. I mean, there there are now more yeah. women comics. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, but I, I comedians. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but I don't think that women view that as a li- as a way that they can make a living. I mean, right. I, I you know just because that there aren't lots of there aren't a ton of. Um, of uh, people, the uh, I mean, uh, I mean, other women to yeah, be no role models. models. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, role models. Yeah. <laughs> but if they realized that God, they could they could do fabulous strips, mm-hmm. you know, uh, then I think more would get. Uh, 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 I mean, would become uh, uh, you know in that milieu. You know, I think also that that uh, humor has traditionally been a male bastion and a and a it, because there's something aggressive about humor and it hasn't been accepted or culturally encouraged. For women, but that's changing now, and there are more yeah. and more comedian w- women comedians and yeah. and more cartoonists. Right. Um, uh, I think I think for the gentleman who just called, also if if you send in your strip to all the syndicates, and don't just send them just to one syndicate, send them into all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you send if you send them into all the all the syndicates, and they say no, um, don't just then say okay, I'll ch- I'll start doing it in brush instead, and boy, this will really make a difference. 
go to something brand new. Go to three brand new ideas for strips. Um, you know, jump into something brand new and then send them back. And then if they turn down that, do it again. Do up three other strips and send them in. Um, eventually, I think, you know, if, you're, if you've got any kind of talent at all, that something will click, uh, you know. We have a call from Bowie, Maryland. Uh, Bowie, I don't know if we're going to have time for our guests to respond here, but we'll certainly take your questions, and if necessary, we'll respond after the break for the news. Go ahead. Uh, hi, Jim. I enjoy uh, your comic every day. Yeah, I was, I was wanting to know uh, if, uh, if you're thinking of your comic strip uh, randomly typed, or are you getting it from a documented type of information where you're putting your comic strip down at? You mean the, what, the, the story ideas they, they get? Excuse me? You mean where do they get their ideas for the, the strip? Yes, yeah, is, is he thinking of it, of it himself? Um, okay. Jokes, All right, that's a good sure. point. And I would yeah. dare say you gentlemen probably get some unsolicited uh, uh, material sometimes. We'll ask you about that and, and answer the idea of uh, the ideas for the strip. We'll have to take a break, though, right now, so we'll answer Bowie's call and take more of your calls coming up in a moment. This is the Jim Bohannon Show, world-renowned, uh, despite the fact that I'm the host here. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Well, so much for scatting. We have uh, calls right now at 703-685-2177 for Mike Peters of Mother Goose and Grim fame, his new book called Four Wheel Grimmy, and Doug Marlette, who's uh, got the new book Double Wide with a View. He, of course, creates the wonderful characters from Kudzu. And here is Buffalo. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. I'm, I am a member of the Niagara Frontier Radio Reading Service, and we read to the visually impaired. They rent a little radio. We read all kinds of things, and I read the comics every week. Oh, you're all wonderful. the comics, and we enjoy yours. They tell us, they call us up, and they love Mother Goose and Grim. And oh, my Thank goodness. You. Well, well, aren't you wonderful? <laughs> well, you sure make our day. I mean, this is really terrific. Well, now, uh, now is this a now is this a a, a, a radio program? Um, yes, the visually impaired rent this one little radio, and it has just the one station. Yeah, the, the, these are carried on uh, frequently on FM subcarriers. Well, For example, yeah. normal radios won't pick this up. There's a reading service like that here in Washington, and I think most I major cities. And Mr. Bob Sikorsky is in charge, and he's very good, and we just love to do this. Well, aren't you sweet? Well, well I am so pleased to meet. Right. It's great. I still have to tell everybody there. Oh boy. Well, uh, well, well. I mean, I mean, keep reading our stuff. Okay. We need everybody. Yeah. We need all the friends you, you we can get. Got to add kudzu as well. Now. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. These services are quite a, quite a service. Uh, they essentially volunteers read uh, things that uh, the uh, uh, visually impaired cannot read, like, uh, for example, newspaper ads. Let's say for specials at the supermarket and and uh, stuff like this. And, and, and obviously cartoon strips as well. That's terrific. By the way, we've got to go back to our call from Bowie, Maryland, too, and uh, the ideas for your strip. Do you get a lot of unsolicited ideas like, like, Doug, uh, I know this will just make a really funny uh, Will Be Done routine. Do you get that in the mail? Yeah, you do. I mean, people, there's something about cartoonists uh, and people having ideas. Everybody has ideas, and they call you up, and they, and they have, you know, the thing you find out is that, that usually if you just give them the opportunity to say their idea, then it's like exercising a demon or something. Mm -hmm. It gets out of them, and they're okay. Usually ideas are not uh, usable because people tend not to think graphically. They yeah. always they always tell you, you know. Well, you can draw uh, around uh, this. You know, yeah. you can draw around this. Draw yeah. a circus and yeah. then a train. Um, uh, I have been I have been working a little bit with uh, a, a, a friend, a mutual. I think a I think it's a mutual friend. I think you know him, Bob Stack. Do you remember oh yeah, Bob right, Stack. Sure, yeah. Bob Stack has been sending me some wonderful things, and so I've been uh, so I've been oh, using terrific. some of those. Yeah. That's terrific. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's really interesting. But see, but that's more on, on a professional basis. Yeah. he's a professional. Yeah, right. In, in terms of, but people do call you yeah. and 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 just kept. Oh yeah, but but you try to woo. You know, I mean, when people send you letters or are 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 calling me, and you try to woo, kind of yeah. stay way back <laughs> because then they get kind of weird. You know, they, you know, and and, and of course most of the people who um, who send you ideas. 90, not most of them, 99 and 9 tenths of them, have no idea where you're coming from. And they send you, now you ought to have the dog kind of uh, on top of a rhinoceros, and the rhinoceros is, you know. <laughs> and you say, yeah, but dogs wouldn't do that. See, uh, 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 uh. Here's Carlsbad, California. You're on the air. Hello. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the dog and the rhinoceros. <laughs> 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 One cartoon that uh, totally escapes me day in and that day out. It's called The Neighborhood, but that's that's not what I called about. <laughs> oh, now that's a funny strip. That's that's done by Jerry 
I'm, I'm, you know, Jerry. I'm <laughs> my buddy Jerry. <laughs> okay. no, no, the neighborhood is good. But, but what, what's your what's your call? Okay. Well, I, I don't understand the mentality that enjoys the neighborhood. Okay. My, my question is, suppose that a person wanted to uh, uh, correspond with uh, uh, the cartoonist and uh, what's the best way to contact them? Through the syndicate or what? what? Right. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, truly, the you know the most natural way is is you, you look on the side of the cartoon and it always says the name of the syndicate that that syndicates the cartoons. Mm -hmm. I mean the strip. You know, you can send it also to the local paper where you read it, and they'll forward it to the oh, syndicate, sure, and then they'll send yeah. it to you, or you can send it, or you know, write to them at their home newspaper, like uh, yeah, okay. we and have. Okay, you, you guys are syndicated by whom? We haven't plugged your syndicates uh, tonight. I'm with Creator Syndicate, and, yeah. and Mike's with Tribune. Yes, uh, 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 the strip is with uh, Tribune, uh, you know, Tribune Media Services, and my editorial cartoons are with, uh, uh, are with uh, uh, United Features, you know, Syndicate. All right, here's a call now coming from Pittsfield, Massachusetts. You're on the radio. Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm an English communication major in college right now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to know from both of you... Um, I'd love to get into single panel cartooning like Gary Larson. Yes. Okay. But I know the comp the, the competitions out there and um like I've subscribed to like cartoon profiles and I hear about the different cartoonists and all the books and the courses you can take, but I mean there's so many of them out there. It's it's just like flooded and um would you recommend any certain ones? You know, after I get out of college I'd like to try to get into this. Well, uh, uh, do you mean are you talking about uh, uh, about syndicates or yeah. types of cartoons? Yeah, I, just, I wouldn't know where to start. Yeah, she's going to. She's got the cartoon idea. She wants to do a single panel like Larson's Far Side, but she's wondering. I, I guess what the same advice we gave before: uh, just uh, throw a hundred rocks at a hundred windows, and you're bound to break glass. Yeah, you know, the best thing to do is to go down to the library, yeah. um, uh, get a you know get an editor and publisher yearbook. Uh, uh, you know, just ask the librarian for editor and publisher yearbook. This is a book that has the names and addresses of every syndicate in the country. And uh, you just kind of go down the line. Uh, I mean, you can pick out the best syndicates or the most popular syndicates just by looking on the comic page, and you'll see there's King Features and United Features and Tribune Media and, and Universal. And, and then you'll get, and then this uh, book will give you their address, and then just take your strips and start sending them out to these out to these um, uh, 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 these syndicates, and then they will either accept them or reject them. But by don't be depressed. By the way, the caller mentioned something called cartoon profiles. Yeah, yeah. it's a magazine, cartoonist Pro sort of like the profiles. industry publication. Right, right. And, and so it's edited by Judd Hurd, and it's really a good. He's really a, a great editor. He does a great job. Do, do, are, are all, all of the editorials listed in word balloons? Very funny. That's yeah, very really cute. Make, are you making fun of us? Fun. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is our business. This <laughs> is our business. We're yeah. supposed That's to make That's the Mike Wallace portion of my area. All right. Hey, well, hey, you know, I don't have to think. I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. We hope that's uh, some help to you, caller. Here's a call from Toronto. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Uh, comment and a question, sure. and yes. then I'll take it off the air. Okay. Um, the comment is I want to thank the gentleman for giving so much joy and laughter to people. I'm sure it's the best medicine in the world. No, you're wonderful. And thank number you. And the question then is, have either of you had occasion to draw a cartoon of uh, Mulroney, the, um, uh, the yeah, the Prime Canadian Minister? Prime Minister. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, he sure has a great, a great jaw to, you, yeah. know, you know, he looks like uh, a Canada's answer to uh, the guy who stands in for Johnny Carson every night, you know. Oh yeah, oh, Jay, Jay Leno. Leno. Yeah, Jay, Jay Leno. Leno. He's yeah. got a Jay Leno jaw. Yeah. You yeah. know, this yeah. we'd like to be drawing. His jaw has its own zip code. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, you know, I've never drawn him. Doug, have you drawn? No, him? No, I haven't. But I'm I'm going to go to Montreal. I think for for a for a Canadian thing. I need to practice up on mine. Good. Well, he's got a great. I mean, I mean, he's got a great face for it. Yeah, uh, one of these Mount Rushmore type faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. Back with more of our calls coming in for Mike Peters and Doug Marlette. We'll be back after these messages. Back to the calls now for our guests, Mike Peters and Doug Marlette, who give us Mother Goose and Grimm and Kudzu, respectively. And we go to San Diego. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. 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 Hey, guys. Um, it's nice to hear you. And I have, I'd like to make a comment and have, and have a request. Is that okay? Absolutely. Right. Okay, the comment is I believe women have trouble doing comedy because... We were raised to be so reverent, and one must abandon that. You have to be an equal opportunity offender. You exactly. Know? Absolutely. Everybody's fair. Also, if one were to be visually um, unable to see your cartoon, impaired, sorry, drunk yep. again, um, 
what? And you were going to do a cartoon on this poor guy that they just drug out of the rubble in San Francisco. Oh, goodness. You know, yeah. I mean, the guy was thirsty, you know, and, and they, nobody came to get him. He almost had to crawl out. Sure. What would your cartoon look like? And may I hang up and listen? Sure. Okay, sure. Okay. Well, I think uh, uh, there are a lot of subjects when where um, you cannot attack them straight on because it's not appropriate. Um, uh, like, you could not say anything, of course, funny about the Challenger uh, accident, yeah. uh, I mean, when it blew up. So all you can kind of do is do what your gut feeling is. Um, Doug did a fabulous cartoon of of, um, uh, of of the American Eagle looking up to the sky, and he had a little tear coming down. It was exactly what Doug felt. It was an appropriate thing to say. And so when, like, over this uh, last week uh, in San Francisco with the earthquake, you know, you've got to do what your gut says. And, and if you feel horror about it, if you feel sadness, you've got to show that in a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, cartoons appeal, particularly political cartoons, they appeal to all kinds of emotions, and not just humor, but uh, there's a whole range of emotions that you can appeal to in a drawing. And, and certain, some subjects are very, uh, uh, it's appropriate to do poignant one, cartoons. One cartoon that, I, that strikes me every time I think of a poignant cartoon, it was, I guess it was Herb Block who did it, and it was after John Kennedy's assassination, and it's the Abraham Lincoln statue from the Lincoln Memorial, right. and it's just Lincoln sitting there in the chair, but his head is bowed down on his hand. I know, I know. Uh, well, actually, actually, you know, that was not Herb. Well, um, who was uh, that? No, uh, that was Bill Malden. But was Herb, Malden? I mean, oh, well, I mean, but Herb, I mean, but Herb did an equally wonderful cartoon uh, of of just a family, you know, uh, sitting around a television set just looking in horror, which is was exactly what everyone was feeling at the time. Yeah. And so, when some tragedy like that happens, you've got to get simple, and you've got to go into your, you got to search your own soul to do the right thing. Yeah. You know? All right, Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, hello. Hello there. Uh, Doug. Yes. I, I just want to make a couple comments. Uh-oh. Uh, first, darn it, I miss you and Charles. Well, thank you. Aren't you sweet? Uh, well, I, I've always enjoyed the cartoon. Thanks. Uh, but this morning, the cartoon in the Child Observer expressed my frustration absolutely. <laughs> Maybe not quite strong enough, but it was... What was that? It was, uh... Uh, Mr. Bush with his uh, fine, uh, you know, Carolinas, uh, California, or bust or something like that, with the FEMA dogs going out the... Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I didn't remember <laughs> yeah. seeing that particular cartoon, but I'm sure it was uh, it was very effective. Did you have a question or anything, or just uh, wanted to point no, that out? I just wish Doug, uh, Doug were back in Charlotte. Well, thank you we so much. Cartoons everyone, so. Well, you're sweet. Well, you appreciate it. Be sure they take them down there. <laughs> now, here's a call from Miami. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Mike Peters one question about a uh, uh, anecdote I'd heard about uh, his character, Grimmy. <laughs> yes. Uh, what I understand is that uh, <clears throat> the character is based on uh, on you. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, um, that is exactly right. Um, uh, I don't know, you know. I don't know if I said this before, but uh, but uh, about the, the Fritos. Oh yeah, I mean about the Fritos. You know, and drinking um, out of the toilet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, in fact, in fact, it's real crazy about that and because the fleas, Mike. And well, the fleas. Yeah. you know, I wanted to have a character. Uh, I wanted to have a dog um, that actually acted like a dog. I didn't want it to be um, kind of sanitized. I wanted to do dog things that dogs do, like like chase cars, have fleas, eat out of trash cans, and to drink out of toilets. Well, the first time I, I had Grim, you know, my dog, me, drinking out of a toilet, I lost Pittsburgh, the whole town of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Some lady had gone and gotten a bunch of her friends to write in, and they said, this is terrible having a dog drinking out of a toilet. You and, are the influencing and, dogs that read this script. Right, sure. exactly. I mean, you know, and editors are listening to people like this. You know, it was awful. But I finally got Pittsburgh back. You know, <laughs> you know all the pro-toilet people came in and, and uh, wrote in. Have you, have you found that, that people will organize like that, and then they'll try to get on your case uh, oh, yeah. and write the publisher? Yeah, you know, cartoons bring out very strong, volatile, passionate feelings in people, both, both positive and negative. I've had, you know, I've had uh, uh, people signing petitions all over the Carolinas <laughs> uh, against uh, cartoons and also in favor of it's. It's kind of amazing. You know, I mean, it is a wonderful part of our lives, but frankly, like like talk shows like this, it ain't brain surgery. And don't you think mm. there should be a little perspective <laughs> about that? No, wait a minute. No. You know, he's oh, criticizing us again. Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean yeah, it's not I brain surgery? Right there, you know, low and inside. <laughs> oh, I get him. 
All right. All right. I can take a hint. We'll, we'll, we'll take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Our guests tonight are two delightful gentlemen. This has been one of the most fun shows we've had in oh, a long, wonderful. long time. Wonderful. And uh, Doug Marlette and Mike Peters will be back with more calls for you after these messages. Uh, you wouldn't believe yep. these guys are doing dueling cartoonists here. It's unreal. Unreal stuff here. Uh, Doug did me one here with the Will Be Done saying, Blessed are the radio talk show hosts, especially Jim Bohannon. There's a marvelous cartoon. Then Mike did one. The Jim, thanks for the plug. Here's Grimmy holding up a fire plug. So then Doug cannot be outdone. He does another Will Be Done. It says, Jim, thanks for the plug. And it shows Will Be Done spitting out this huge glob of chewing tobacco. <laughs> so now Mike has come back. Da -da -dun 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 -dun. Jim, thanks for the slug. <laughs> this, this creepy slug with a slime trail walking Wait a minute, wait a minute. Me. Let me do that. Let me wait do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I forgot. Where, where are we on the phone call here? I, uh, uh, well, we have to take a call. Uh, do you know who this is, Sally? On the, uh, well, okay, what the heck. Okay, we'll come back to you and we'll take St. Louis. You're on the air. Hello. Hi, I'm calling from St. Louis. Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm glad to finally get through. I think you guys are geniuses in your own right there. Oh, thank um, you. I've been looking into cartoonists a little bit, and there's a new paper in town here in St. Louis. It's The Sun. Yes. And there is a newer cartoonist here. His name is Thompson or something. Yes. Um, I have three questions. They're kind of related, which I'll, answer, which I'll ask and then um, listen to your answers okay. up the air. I'm, first of all, curious as to whether or not you've heard of them, and what are... A cartoonist. I understand he's supposed to be a younger cartoonist, and I'm curious as to what it is that makes a younger cartoonist. Um, Probably the date of birth. Newspaper. <laughs> um, what do editors look for? Is it the wit or the artistic quality, or what is it? And second of all, how do you get around editors that may try to shape um, what you think as a cartoonist is a good cartoon, but then try to edit it to please constituents? Sure. Okay. All right. Okay, what do editors look for? Well, yeah, how do, they, how, how do you deal with those who try to shape you, you know, try to rec recreate Doug Marlette in their own image? Well, I think the first, uh, the first thing the editors look for are, are young cartoonists who will work for nothing. You know, if, <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the primary... Uh, yeah, yeah, except I've seen this guy, Thompson. He's good. Yeah, you know, the cartoonist for the Sun is good. You know, yeah. I mean, in St. Louis. But, but uh, a lot of editors will try to... Mold, uh, you. mold you, mold a young cartoonist into your own image. Uh, I mean, into the into the editor's. It's kind of like what happens to cheese when you leave it out of the refrigerator for a long time. And you get yeah. molded. Oh, and, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think the great, I mean, but I think the great editors realize, no, you give them, you give them rain. It's just exactly. like a good, good race. Uh, yeah, you know, that's good exactly race right. But no, the best editors understand that that cart You know, you hire a, a cartoonist to do what they do, and that they don't think the way editors do. As I said earlier. The, you know, it's really, they're different tribes, and and, uh, right. and, uh, and editors approach things in certain ways, uh, and cartoonists in, in other ways, and, and never the twain really uh, shall meet. But, right. it, but the best editors recognize the value of, of what cartoons bring to the editorial page or, or the comics page, and that is a, a liveliness. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the uh, question of wit versus art, which was the first part of the comics question? Is it more important to have uh, the... The, the good lines and the word balloons, or does the art to contribute that much? You know, I, th I think that it's both. I think and it's a, a mixture of both. And I think it's a car good cartooning is about thinking, is about good thinking, and, and okay. thinking in a way that is, that is instinctive and, and fun right. and, and exciting and interesting. Yeah, I don't think you can have a, a, a good or a great editorial cartoon and be a lousy idea. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you can have great drawing, but you can't be a great cartoon and have a lousy idea. Yeah. Y you know, the strength of the editorial cartoon, or the strength of any editorial, uh, I mean, of any cartoon, is that it stays in your memory whenever you think about that subject. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, um, there are great editorials written about Vietnam War that I can't remember, but there are terrific editorial cartoons about the Vietnam War that always come to mind yeah, whenever the, I think of that. They tattoo war. your soul that are emblazoned yeah. on mm -hmm. your memories, like the, like the Bill Malden cartoon yeah. after Kennedy uh, was assassinated. Yeah. You re will remember that forever, and I oh, will yeah. too. And that's the strength. That's the strength of the political yeah. cartoon. Okay, this is a call now from Independence, Missouri. Hello. Hey, Dougie, Mikey. Hi. Oh, how are you? Who's this? This is Professor Heinrich Schmutz. Heinrich! Ja, <laughs> wohl, mein Liebchen. <laughs> We have a new radio program here, a new version, updated version of the Larry, Curly, and Bo. <laughs> <laughs> who is this? The only locally. <laughs> who, who is this? This is actually Peter in Independence. 
Pete. Hello, Pete. <laughs> crazy Pete. Crazy God, Pete. I was hoping Pete was going to call. Wild and crazy Pete. What's on your mind, Pete? Uh, Mike, yeah, I'm, I'm Mike. I mean, I was going to ask you, when you, uh, your daughter Marcy, is her name? Yes. How, how much does she uh, come to you for, not advice, but gives you ideas? And then I'm going to oh. quick remark here and let you answer right. that off the phone. Yeah. Um, I remember many years ago, was this a Max and Moritz? Was that a cartoon from many, many years ago? Okay, uh, I, I, I don't know about that, but I think that as far as our, our family members and stuff like that, God, they give us ideas all the time. I mean, we always are bumping off, uh, I mean, like my wife, Marion, my, all my kids, uh, uh, Doug's wife, even I call up, you know, if I, if I have an idea and, and Doug is not around or, some, or my wife is not around or my kids are not around, you know, I, 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 I will call up anybody to see, hey, is this a good idea or not? Yeah, you, know? you, you started calling my two-year-old. I know, um, I know. Yeah. It's really kind of sad. How much, by the way, does Marcy stand to inherit? That was my question. Oh. <laughs> but, well, <laughs> Toronto, we have to do a quick call from Toronto. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm sort of in the opposite position of some of the other callers. So I'm a, an illustrator here, mm -hmm. and I've got sort of the germ of an idea, uh, but I don't really have the uh, writing capacity to... to uh, I've, I've always been a, a big fan of Al Cap and Little Abner, and yes. I, I think that um, there's um, there's kind of a dearth of uh, that type of uh, humorous continuing story okay. type of strip, right. and uh, that's what I'm really interested in. But um, you want to do a strip? Yeah. Okay, because we've only got about another thirty seconds here. Okay, I'm just wondering if you have any ideas as to where I might look for a writer. Okay, the guy's looking for a writer. Um, yeah, uh, there's a magazine or a book uh, called Writer's Digest. And once again, go down to the go down to your library. Ask ask about Writer's Digest. If they don't if they don't have a copy of Writer's Digest, then they can at least find out where a copy is. Uh, or you uh, can send your stuff to me, and I'll be your writer. Yeah, no, uh, no. Uh, I mean, this Writer's Digest has the names of comedy writers and and people. I mean, looking for that kind of thing. All right, well, that's uh, going to wrap it up. Gosh, you guys have been great. Thank you both. Thank well, you very, very, very much. Yeah. Lots of fun. Again, uh, getting in the, the stuff here, the, the latest of these guys' works will be coming out now in the bookstores, Four Wheel Grim with Mike Peters, and, of course, uh, Double Wide with a view from Doug Marlette of Kudzu fame. This is the Jimbo Haddon Show coming to you on the Mutual Broadcasting System.